Hi folks, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Today I thought we'd talk about some armor wars, but we already talked about Iron Man armor wars. One of the biggest Iron Man-centric events that took place in an Iron Man book. <laughs> Most of the other bigger Iron Man stories take place in the greater Marvel Universe, like Civil War. But uh, there was a time when Iron Man was like a fan favorite character. It was all the way over there and he had a crazy armor war. And uh, you missed that episode, but I I'm did. sure you saw it because I know you watch every episode that we make, especially <laughs> the ones you're not on. Yeah. But, uh, but suffice it to say, the idea of armor wars, to truncate a little bit, Tony's upset that his armor is getting in the hands of the wrong people, so he goes on like a one-man war to remove that technology from everybody, and it spins out of control, Justin Hammer's involved, sounds a lot like Iron Man 2. Mm. Yeah. Only yeah. without a lot of fun fan favorite characters <laughs> that do appear in the Armor Wars comic and the animated series did a straight up adaptation of Armor Wars that was pretty accurate. Wow. Weirdly accurate. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. It's harder to do it different than to just just do what do, was there. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that drives me crazy about every adaptation. Yeah. Is where I'm like, why, if you're gonna do an adaptation, why pretend you're creative? And then do <laughs> something else. Like, just do just the do adaptation. The, adaptation. Yeah. Well, the reason you're doing the adaptation is to poach the audience, right? So why alienate and annoy that audience by telling them <laughs> to come because they're gonna see something they know and then give them something completely different? Well, it's we just wanna, we frustrating. Keep them guessing. We don't want them to be able to know what's in it. Right, but they know what's in it, and they're still showing up, and you're banking on that. So why are you alienating them <laughs> by then making it by not tricking that? them into thinking it's yeah. going to be something that they know? I don't know. That's why the animated series did that. Of course, the thing about that is no one was watching that cartoon anyway. But they did make an Armor Wars two, of course, because it was the most successful Iron Man event of the time. Right. So you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. Of course, the original Armor Wars was written by David Michelinie, and I believe he worked with Bob Layton as well. The story behind the creation or formation of the original Armor Wars was such that uh, they were disappointed that no one at Marvel was pushing the Iron Man book. Mm -hmm. You know, they were like working hard and doing some fun stuff with Iron Man. They were getting new readers in, and they felt like no one was giving them any push from the company, from within. And so, but if they're getting new readers in, what do you care? Well, because they think they could get even more readers if they right. actually tried to get them to show up. Maybe you should be happy with what you got. <laughs> well, they weren't. <laughs> well, I guarantee some other books were getting pushed. And oh, like, yeah. What the fuck? Big time. That's not fair. Well, yeah. So at a like work dinner, you know, the, the big wigs at Marvel at the time and Michelinie and Leighton were there, and they're talking about it, and they're like, hey, how come we're not getting pushed? And Jim Shooter infamously said, well, because you got nothing to push. Oh. Like, well, oh. you you have a book. Great. How do I sell that? Iron Man's really good. No, give me an event, and I can sell that. Mm, okay. So they created Armor Wars. Okay, okay. And then, of course, after the success of Armor Wars, they're like, well, we got to do this again. We got to get more Armor Wars. But you <laughs> can't... Well, you, what? what the no, you already did that. <laughs> well... Be careful what you wish for, I'm Jim Shooter. So they- I mean, I guess logically, the problem of his armor ended up in the wrong hands would be a continuous Right, but thing. then it would be the armor saga. <laughs> is he or... like a hobbit? He's like, oh, we've had one armor wars, yes. <laughs> what about what second, second armor, armor wars? wars? <laughs> Damn right. What Michel about second demon in a bottle? We gotta get demon in a bottle too? <laughs> they did do more demon in a bottle. Oh like, my God. Well, cause he realized More demons, more bottles? But he, he had a second bottle. Yeah. Oh, well, it was an even bigger demon. Well, alcoholism <laughs> is a tough thing. To, well, that's true. It's oh, a yeah, tough I mean, to, 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 to throw off your back. That's realistic too. Yeah. Michelini leaves the book. Cause he's already working on Spider-Man. He's like, doing another armor like, I gotta go invent Venom. Oh. So oh. goodbye. And he leaves. And so it's just Leighton. And he's like, Okay, well, I guess I could work on it. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, Armor Wars 2. He's like, got it. And so he writes this one issue that introduces the idea of Armor Wars, or at least setting up Armor Wars. Everyone two. at Marvel's like, Armor Wars 2 is coming. Here it is. Oh, shit. And what happens is, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> earlier earlier in Iron Man, because like Iron Man, of course, is just an ongoing saga. There's nothing like segmenting it except like the armors he's wearing. And even then, like it's just it's it just becomes a whole big colorful mess. <laughs> but uh, Tony Stark had many dalliances with many ladies. Yeah. And at one point uh, he met this lady who was especially enthralled with him and didn't understand the concept of a one night stand. <laughs> and Ooh. so uh, through a number of 
key appearances, she inevitably uh, finagles her way into his house while he's gone, waits for him to come home, and then shoots him in the chest with a gun. Oh my god. And then that kicks off a saga where Tony Stark is paralyzed. And then there's this whole court case subplot of Iron Man, My where it's God. like, I gotta get this lady that I banged one time behind bars for shooting me. And it's interesting because of course, like he's still Iron Man, right? He's gotta Iron Man up. So he ends up like being put into this armor and the armor has this kind of like mental connectivity. <sighs> so the armor can move his right. limbs he for him. He can move his limbs with the armor. Exactly. All right. I mean, that's which kind is, of interesting. It's kind guess. of messed up, and it's like, ah. Does, I, does everyone at this point know that Tony Stark is Iron Man? No, they don't. Okay, so, so like, he's got to keep up appearances. Do they know because they've never been told, or do they know because they were told and it was undone by? Somebody? No, no magic, no <laughs> okay. undoing. No, no, it's just he's his bodyguard. Right, and that totally holds up. <laughs> Yeah, and definitely won't just be a throwaway self-referential line in the first and best Iron Man movie. Well, I guess it makes it even easier now if he's in a wheelchair and the bodyguard. Well, that's very true. Well, yeah. They're like, I but guess also, obviously he can't be Iron Man. Well, also like Jim Rhodes sometimes will put it on and help him out. Oh, that yeah. is too. Exactly. And of course, David McElhinney invented Jim Rhodes and hated the idea of Jim Rhodes ever being an Iron Man. Like, what? Jim Rhodes is Tony Stark's normal guy friend. He yeah. flies the helicopter. That's the only thing he wears. Right. And then uh, occasionally Jim Rhodes will try on the Iron Man armor and fill in for Iron Man when like Tony Stark goes away or he's sick or he's yeah. dying or whatever. But then Jim Rhodes has like a traumatic event in the suit. And so he like freaks out whenever he wears it. So now he has a in canon reason not to want to ever be Iron Man. So we got that out of here <laughs> before these fans start champing the bit for war machines. Right. Uh, of course, inevitably, we know he will get over it and then right. be War Machine and be all the better for it. But for now, Jim Rhodes is just kind of like, I don't want to have to wear that. Please okay. don't make me. We're in the he's scared phase. He's he's scared. Okay. But he's but he's also such a badass. He's willing to go through it sometimes to help uh, out his good buddy, Tony Stark. And then, through some like technology, they end up <laughs> inventing a chip. Actually, there's like another company that exists that Stark buys. <laughs> And then, because he finds out that they're like, we're making these these chips that we could put in your spine to make you walk. He's like, well, the company's mine now, and now all you do is make those chips right. for me. And yeah. uh, it's not like he runs out of them. It's just like once you install the chip, it like interacts with his whole system, his nervous system, and then repairs him. So he has right. a chip in him. Yeah. From well, for now. Oh. No. I mean, eventually right. he'll have like extremis armor that'll like rebuild his entire circulatory system. So like, it doesn't like for, okay. for for this time period, he has a chip in him that is allowing him to walk, and he like retrains his body. And often he forgets it's there because so does the writer. Well, well, yeah, because once he has it, then he's just exactly like he was before. Well, except it's the same writer. It was Michelini the whole time. So Michelini's just playing with it, and then Michelini leaves, right. and Layton's like, okay, and then in a previous story to this. Stark's back starts hurting more. And he's like, oh no. And then Leighton sets up Armor Wars 2. And at the end of that issue that he wrote, Stark notices that the pain in his back has completely evaporated. His back no longer hurts. The chip must be working or something. What's going on? Armor Wars 2. But then Bob Leighton quit to become editor in chief of Valiant Comics. What? <laughs> oh, plot twist. Yeah. Huh. This is way better than whatever's in this book. 100% better. <laughs> oh, no. I so, was joking. Yeah, well, oh. I'm not. So Leighton's <laughs> gone, and they still have Armor Wars. Right. So Marvel's well, like, like, but what did, are the Armor did Wars? Did he leave him a road map? No. A Jim Rhodes map? <laughs> uh. No, no one. Michelini left no map, Leighton left no map, and John Byrne is just. Okay, so they offer the job to John Byrne, who is currently at this point in, those, in, in, in Marvel history writing the Namor series. Okay. <laughs> and so he's having a grand old time with Namor on the East Coast, and he, he immediately pulls Namor out of the ocean and gives him a business suit and gives him a company. And so like Namor's in charge of like a whole company. And what? Got, it, it's so great because- Wait, Nam that's what he does it before he gets on Iron Man? Yes. He's and like, so I just wanna write Iron Man. Basically. He's basically like auditioning for Iron Man, even though <laughs> John Byrne could just say, I want to write Iron Man, and they would just give it to him. So John Byrne is like changing things up with Namor, and then uh, he gives Namor some arch nemeses in the form of these incestuous twin business owners. What? Yeah. Uh, in the Mars Corporation, and two R's. 
And so the uh, Mars twins. Say, uh, you can't do that. No, yeah. They make delicious candies that <laughs> melt in your mouth, not in your hand. No, it's just, it's M-I-R-R-S, but the Mars twins, and they are insane and creepy and weird, and they, you know, it's a, it's a Comics Code Authority approved book, so they can't be like having sex with each other, right. but we can heavily imply it right. by like body language and subtle hints oh and not God. so overt references. But they introduce the twins in an awesomely well-written story that involves the female twin like visiting her brother and discovering that he's going to blow his brains out with a revolver because he's bored. What? And then uh, Caesar wept for there were no more worlds to conquer. <laughs> And then he gets a wild hair up his ass about destroying Namor. <laughs> and so he's renewed. Oh my God. Oh, he's just insane. He's insane. Yeah. And, no. and, she, and so he convinces her to seduce Namor like he's Lex Luthor or something. Oh my God. And then she falls in love with Namor. Oh. And it's, and it's great because his whole story wraps up in amazing fashion. Typical Marvel stuff. I'm really excited to talk about it if we get a chance to talk about it. But John Byrne's like, I invented these, these, these sex twins. Uh, so, uh, hey, can I do anything with this Iron Man book? They're like, as long as you call it Armor Wars 2, I don't give a shit what you do. So he's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna use my sex twins. What? No. So they're, they're bored and they're like, well, I'm destroying- Again? Yeah, well, I'm still bored. I'm destroying Namor and it's going so well. Why don't I take on Iron Man? Oh, weird. Yeah. So we they're do, picking multiple fights. Yep. Do we go back to the chip ever? Yeah. Okay. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the chip's coming I, up. I just Don't wanted worry. to make sure we didn't have the one issue, and then they're like, Yeah, I thought and that, they're like, What's up with the chip? It was going to be like, And then none of that matters yeah. because it's a new writer and he doesn't give a shit. No, no. They're all company men. John oh, Burns, okay. like, The chip was set up, right. and then it's an Armor Wars 2. Right. AW2. Aw. Oh. Here we go. Aw, 2. <laughs> but then we set up the new thing. And the new status quo for Iron Man is that John Burns writing it and John Romita Jr. is drawing it. And for my money, it's some of the best looking John Romita art I've ever seen. I love John Romita Jr.'s art on Iron Man. He already draws people with squares. <laughs> Iron Man armor is just all blocks and squares. Yeah, it's just blocks it's like and squares. Perfect. Of course, after Armor Wars 1, Stark dumps the Silver Centurion armor, my favorite armor, mm. in favor of the armor he will wear forever. And when I say forever, until issue 300 when he replaces it with the armor that they will use in the animated series. Mm -hmm. But this is, for my money, classic Iron Man armor. Mm -hmm. It is red, it is yellow. <laughs> they want to say gold, it but is it is red not. And yellow. He looks like a bee. I love this armor. I love this Iron Man. And but you got two on the cover there. Yeah. Okay. Armor Wars. Right. Two armors. Yeah, okay. Oh. Throw that out of your head. Who's in the other armor? Rhodes. Oh. So <laughs> let's set up Armor Wars 2. Yeah, oh, that right. is just yellow. Yeah, it's just yellow. So Tony Stark and an extra Iron Man are being thrashed by a big, crazy tank robot monster. In the future? <laughs> They're in New York City on a street. That, oh. That is, any street. That is not New York City or any street. No, oh. it's just, it's, it's in ruins. This oh, whole place okay. has been destroyed by this crazy robot. How'd that robot get there? How'd that robot got there? Where's the Fantastic Where's he from? Four? Why is no one in New York doing anything about it? <laughs> yeah, these and are all good questions. So Iron Man is getting his ass kicked by this robot, but previously, an identical Iron Man was also getting his ass kicked by this robot. <laughs> and it turns out that it's a drone. This is the first time we're seeing oh. that Tony Stark can pilot these armors remotely. Really? Using his like mental whatever the hell. Oh, this, that's this right here, like it's an armor war, and there's two of them. Yeah, I'm already getting what I paid for. That's right. You're getting double your money back. <laughs> you know that book. makes sense because you already introduced the concept where he was paralyzed and his brain was controlling yes. like, the suit. So it's like, well, if it could do it when he's paralyzed, like why does he have to physically be in it? Exactly. He could use some kind of wireless connection, right. to transmit the instructions <laughs> right. to another and I, suit. Yeah. I, I guess this is like. When this is happening, it's like, wow, what? Yeah. But like now, I'm like, yeah, duh. Yeah. Right. No. Sure. Iron Man inevitably defeats the robot, and then reveals that we are in a training room, like a danger room. <laughs> well, he literally says, "Well, the X Men have a danger room. Oh. The Avengers have a training room. I gotta have one too." So they built a like scale model of this like two blocks of New York City. Wow. To destroy with this. Welcome to the thing. Stark Room. That's right. Stark Room. Love it. 
No notes. <laughs> so then Rhodes comes in and he's like, wow, that drone got its butt kicked. That's amazing that you were able to like no, that you were able to defeat that drone that you built to be defeated by you. Yes. But it was no, all the safety guards were removed and everything. Right. It, was, it was a serious fight. I could have yeah. got I could have died. But this is what's the crazy part, is that you know, the drone got its butt kicked, but Iron Man pulled a come from behind victory. But then you open up the mask. The drone did the come from behind victory, and Iron Man was playing possum and pretended to be the drone. Tricked Rhodes. That's how good the drone is. Oh. Wow. It's like you don't even have to be Iron Man anymore. Yeah, it is like that. Yeah. Except, like, no one gets that idea. <laughs> what? what? No one just goes, man, I should just not be Iron Man anymore. This is stupid. Yeah, I could die. Like, I could be, like, jerking just, off and I'm watching TV have, and just be Iron Man. I could just have two drones. Right. Why well, have, well, how about a hundred drones? Yeah. Well, you will eventually. Exactly. In that movie. Maybe yeah. also in the books. I don't know. Yeah. So Iron Man takes off his armor and pretty much all of his other clothing, revealing nothing but a scant uh, swimsuit. Behold. Yeah. And uh, he's talking to Rhodes while this is happening, and he reveals that he's got like a twinge in his shoulder and reminds the reader that his back doesn't hurt anymore, but what's going on? But my shoulder hurts My now. shoulder, what? And then it's revealed that there's this other character, DeWitt. And DeWitt works for the Mars Twins. Then I'll tell you that. I'm just bearing the lead. Nah. But, but DeWitt is the real villain of Armor Wars. Okay. A character that John Byrne makes up for this story, Armor Wars 2. Okay. So DeWitt is like, yes. And the, re the revelation <laughs> is that DeWitt and the Mars Corporation somehow managed to take control of the company before Stark's acquisition of that chip and uses the chip to gain access to Stark's nervous system so now they can pilot Stark's body and when they, they want and to. And they know he's Iron Man? No, they don't. Huh. They because just think they're going to move Tony Stark around like a puppet. Yes. Okay. And they say no fewer than nine times that it's a real shame that they don't have access to his eyes so they could see through them to see what's going on uh, with Iron Man or with Tony Stark. With Tony Stark, right. I guess they're doing that to let you know that they don't know he's right, Iron Man. Right, because otherwise you'd be like, why don't they know what he's doing right now? Right. However, we have established that the suit can be operated when you're a paraplegic. So if his body can be puppeted, we can assume that we're going to shove that body into the suit and the suit will remote drive the Stark body. And when that happens in this book, they are confused as shit about how come Stark isn't going where they want or doing what they want and why they can't find him anywhere. <laughs> but what I would love is if he was like the GPS and they were like, how is it that Stark is somehow going 250 miles per hour? <laughs> but alas, doesn't take it's place. It's not like that, yeah. He must be on a jet or something. <laughs> I, I like this because if there was a chip yeah. that did this, you wouldn't be able to see through his eyes, no. for example. That is not what that does. Right, that's it's right. It's an interface from his brain, which is entirely his, yep. to his nervous system. Yes. It gets signals from his brain, but it's not controlling his brain. Nope. Nope. And, it's not, and it wouldn't necessarily have insight into what his eyes see. Yes. Because it would need that right. to move his limbs. No. So they, I like that. Yeah. That is accurate in the world that they've created. It makes sense. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I appreciate the, the thought. Effort. Exactly. Right. It's, it's Ten science points awarded. <laughs> That's right. You keep score at home. So Iron Man gets a ping that there's an attack at an installation that he owns, which is unfortunately called Nuke U. And <laughs> what? Nuke U is a nuclear reactor that Stark has control over. He runs, he owns it. Yeah. Nuke me? <laughs> no, no, Nuke, nuke you. you. Like it's also like a campus. That's the other thing is that like right. it's like a, like, a, like a college, but it's not. It's just where we keep our nuclear <laughs> reactor. So Iron Man springs in action. He goes to Nuke U and he meets up with like a person who works there, like a scientist. And he asks what's going on because he's gotten like, you know, people are just pouring out of the building. Mm -hmm. And one of them refers to the aggressor inside as a ghost. Now, there is a espionage-based supervillain in the Marvel Universe called The Ghost. It's not The Ghost. Uh, but Iron <laughs> oh. Man immediately assumes it's a ghost because they all refer to each other by name. Like, they all have fun names. Right. And he's like, well, she said it was a ghost, so it I assume it must ghost. be The Ghost. Right. And it's not. Uh, but I like the reference anyway. <laughs> so he goes in, and uh, he is attacked by 
just stuff, like stuff in the building. Like a poltergeist. Well, yes, oh. yeah, like, 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 like As yeah. if there was a ghost. Exactly, like, things were just being chucked up, like eye beams and huge complicated super science like bits. <laughs> and uh, he's crushed by debris that looks like a combination of metals and rock. And he dies. It's a really weird twist in yeah, our Wars Yeah, we joke. kill Iron Man. <laughs> but no, he doesn't die, but everyone around him thinks he dies. Oh. He blasts free, and they're like, wow. And then he's like, get the hell out of here. And people are working there, they're like, what do we do, Iron Man? He's like, uh, get the fuck out of here. That's what you should do for me. So he goes further down to find his aggressor, and uh, ultimately is... That's kind of cool. Yeah, ultimately they drop more crap on him. And... <laughs> He's prepared for it this time, so he's able to like not be crushed by it, but he's also enveloped in it. And so he's finding his way through, and while he's being like, you know, trapped, he's also being tormented uh, by this ghost aggressor who's saying cryptic crap, like a ghost would, but saying things like, I have a gift for you, my old foe. Oh, when you killed me, I swore revenge, and oh. now I'm getting it. And it's like, oh, it's a literal ghost. <laughs> Wait, really? Oh, it is a ghost, though. It is not a ghost, but like, it's someone they who want you thought Iron was Man dead, to think but... a ghost. Yes, yeah. because the Titanium Man is here, and he is ready to kill Iron Man for killing him in Armor Wars. Oh, that's right. Titanium Man burned alive in his Titanium Man armor because the Gremlin was in it, and he was the one who died. But Titanium Man died in Armor Wars, and they were just like, "Yeah, that's fine. Anyone can be <laughs> Titanium Man; doesn't matter." Uh, but Titanium Man's back, and he's like, "You killed me." I should point out at this point that there's also a massive B-plot in Armor Wars 2. Mm. Okay. That B-plot is this. The Mandarin. Okay. Classic Iron Man villain. Mm -hmm. Had amnesia at one point or another. Okay. Uh, the Mandarin also is... He, the, matter, the Mandarin can be categorized by a number of visual cues. One of them is that he is... Uh, some might call a racist caricature <laughs> of uh, Asian panic during wartime. Right. Others might call him a Fu Manchu parody. And still others might say that he is problematic. <laughs> but in the 90s, we called him the Mandarin. And the Mandarin was half white and half Asian. And uh, his mother was a prostitute and his father was a European businessman. And okay. yeah, that's right. And but 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 Whoa. Mandarin is like that sucks. That origin blows. So he <laughs> makes up that he comes from like a dynasty and that he's like got all this like rich history. And then just As like do. and then just leans into it. He's like, I'm the Mandarin and I own all this stuff and I deserve like accolades and like positions of power and stuff. And right. screw you. Also, the Mandarin discovered like an alien spaceship <laughs> and saw a bunch of like stuff that kind of looked like rings. And so he took all 10 of them and put them on each of his fingers. And each of those rings represented or used different elements, not like wind and fire, but rather like stuff, like the mind, almost like they're gems, but they're not infinity gems. Right, okay. They're not infinity gems. These are magic rings or space magic space rings. Space magic rings. They're, because it is magic, but also it's, they're aliens. But, but they are from space. Yes. And the Mandarin <laughs> wields these 10 rings. And if you watch the Iron Man animated series, it's great because he's got these 10 rings and that's what makes him so powerful. And the first thing you do when you defeat him is you scatter his rings across the planet. And then for an entire season or two, the Mandarin, at the end of every episode of Iron Man, goes and looks for a ring. Oh, that's kind of cool. And it is kind of fun because then you know, like we're building towards, and then what's so frustrating, and you'll never watch it, so I'll tell you, at the end, he gets all 10 and he's immediately defeated. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> what? Yeah. How is, because why? of course he is, because every episode is 22 minutes. Yeah, but you spent... You, you, you spent you, 10 episodes. Yeah, you, you did a multi-episode arc, yeah. kind of. Yeah. And then you like chickened out or whatever? No, they were just like, the, and, then, and then what happens? They're like, well, he's not going to win. Well, you well, could take could. One, one episode to defeat him. You could have it to be continued. And it's rough. Like, it's a tough fight, but still. <sighs> well, because by that point, the Iron Man animated series had become Force Works. And they didn't call it Force Works, mm. but it was straight up Force Works. Okay. Uh, and uh, so Iron Man had help. But so the Mandarin has his ten rings, or had his ten rings. Now he's nine rings, but he oh. lost one of them. But then he gets it back. Oh, do you leave it in the bathroom? He must. Do you take your ring off to clean your hands? Exactly. And then, and then he forgot about it or fell in the toilet. Oh no! But the Mandarin gets his tenth ring, and then he's like, "Wait, this is a fake. Even though it has power, it can do stuff. It's not the real tenth ring." So what? he goes to get his tenth ring back, and that's what this plot is about. This plot is about the Mandarin fulfilling his destiny that is set down by an old 
equally racist Chinese caricature <laughs> character. We're just going to see what the Mandarin's doing every so often. That's literally not connected at plot all. Plot B to Armor Wars is Mandarin, what he doing? <laughs> and what he doing? And so does he have machinations? Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's just like, well, you know, Mandarin's a character in this book. Like, uh, is he like Mary Jane is, is he, or Aunt May. Yes. Sometimes is he related they have their at all to the, the ghosts? Armor, no. Or no. No. We're just we're setting up we're just seeing some what the heavy doing. shit with Mandarin and what he's doing and what his true destiny is. Is this essentially like John Byrne's like, I was told I had to do Armor Wars 2, which I will, but I want to set up what my legacy is going to be, which is dealing with the Mandarin. So I'm going to do that in this, but I'm, I'm going to give you Armor Wars 2. But yeah. like, really, when we're done with this, trust me, folks, well, strap then, in. The Dragon Seed Saga. Be there. We're never doing it. Uh. The so that is what I'm this sorry, leads the what to. Now? The Dragon Seed Saga. Like, that is the next story arc. Does he lose his ten rings and have to go all no. over the world to find them? Like, in, like in, Dragon the Balls? No, it's... What? No. Uh. No, it's not like Dragon Ball. He just needs his tenth ring. Right. He's got the nine. Well, he, he, he has ten rings. They're he just finds out one ones. of them's counterfeit. Right. So he's going to oh, get, get them appraised. Do we find out... Why it's counterfeit? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we do. It's not just like, oh, one of them's not real. Now I have another problem to solve, and I won't worry we about. Just keep like, the can down the road. Yeah. I'm just a really bad writer, and uh, <laughs> I, I realized, oh my god, he needs his ten rings. He gets his ten rings, and then I'm like, I don't know what to do with the ten rings. So one of them's fake, and then he finds out that each of them is fake. And then he goes on another quest to get the real ten rings, and then we can do the whole damn thing. He's all like, over I again. never had the real ten rings. What the hell? It's my twenty-three the part story. The power is actually in me the oh, whole time. I never needed rings. The rings are bubkis. So. Iron Man fights the ghost of Titanium Man. Right. Okay. The I mean, ghost of Titanium Man? Yes. Or Titanium Man pretend to be a ghost? It, it is Titanium Man <laughs> is able to attack in. him and drop stuff on him, but also can like phase through oh. the stuff he drops on him. So he's like, so, oh, so he's really a ghost. So not like a, an, a, a suit of armor covered in flour. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just, <laughs> These chains represent the, uh, all the bad things I did in life. No, he's <laughs> like, like Iron Man ghost. A ghost to, wouldn't have armor. Well, no, the but ghost like, would just be the guy inside it. That's very true. Yeah, it would be the gremlin, but the gremlin's very unformidable. Like he, he's very uh, uh, unimpressive looking. Right. Uh, but with titanium, whoa. Right. Now, what I don't understand is why the scientist who works at Nuke U was like, "It's a ghost!" Like they know Titanium Man died. Like I have his trading card at home. I know that the, the, the Titanium <laughs> Man died during Armor Wars, and he must be a ghost. No. No. They're just like, I heard noises. It must be a ghost. Yes. So <laughs> titanium <laughs> science. Exactly. So Titanium Man like uses a laser beam or whatever to cut through things to drop stuff on Iron Man, a including ghost like, that uses lasers. What? Excuse me. They're ghost lasers. Those are ghost lasers. <laughs> they're not ghost lasers. I promise you. This is oh. also this is all smoke and mirrors. It's not right. really a ghost. Obviously. Yeah. But uh, so he uses these lasers what? to like cut the 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 the. the the fuel rods to nuke you, so oh. the whole reactor's gonna go. Oh. And so Iron Man's like, oh crap, what do I do with this? So he just goes underground and he ditches the ghost of Titanium Man and he picks up essentially the entire ground around the reactor and then just goes to an area uninhabited in the ocean and then just, just drops it down a very deep trench. There's mm. no way there isn't something inhabiting that. Well, I mean, Oh, yeah. I don't know if John Byrne pays off this subplot <laughs> in his Namor book, but he should. I don't know. Yeah, that'd but be cool. It would be cool. Instead, what happens is he, he drops down the trench, and then it, like, goes off. Oh. And he's like, okay, I'll alert the authorities to, like, avoid this area of the ocean. I wish I could have thrown it into space, but my armor wasn't powerful. Uh, it explodes in, like, a nuclear bomb? Yeah. No, it was a nuclear That's explosion in this happen, trench. can but okay. Well, like, no, what we see is not, like, well, it explodes. Okay, so we don't know that it's a nuclear blast. It might be a it, it, hydrogen it, no, explosion. Yeah, it's a, it, he says that, like, I need to warn people about going near this area. Okay, well, you would need to do that, whether it exploded or not, because it's a reactor which is he, melting down yeah. and releasing it, He says it insides. releases minimal radiation. Oh. That's what his sensors uh, <sighs> okay. indicate. So it's not that big a deal, right. but it is. But it, there's I, a I, huge I, explosion. Yes, and it would have killed everyone in the, in the area. Right. And it would have been a nuclear explosion had I let it And it's go. in the ocean. Yeah. Which is fine. And That's it, where you dump it, all your garbage. And if it didn't explode or whatever, isn't it just leaking, leaking yes. radiation into the... It would be. Absolutely. And no it's not like you, just, it's like you just keep it from the, this area. I mean, like, it, there's currents. Mm-hmm. 
well, it's yeah. It yeah. depends. Yeah, it depends on the area where he dropped it and yeah. what the water there is doing. And That's if true. If it's circulating around places, it could carry, but it would also disperse the radiation. Yeah. So it'd probably be fine. It's fine. It's better but than letting it explode, it. and it's better than trying to push it into space and letting it go off in our atmosphere. Yeah. So Iron Man goes home. He's like, "Well, that was fun. What a night. What a nightmare." Ooh, what about the ghost? <sighs> I don't know. He left. I'm or something. tired. <laughs> so he goes home, <laughs> and he and he and he lies down. And when he wakes up, he's in San Francisco in a very expensive hotel. What? Like, uh, I must have drunk a ton of alcohol and had a blackout. Which I really appreciate, like, the kind of, he's like, oh, no. Like, I had a relapse. Yeah. Because right. I'm in a different city. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's a problem. Interesting. So he calls up Mrs. Arbogast, his receptionist, and she, he's like, hey, <laughs> when was the last time you, like, heard from me? <laughs> She's like, three days ago. And he's like, that was quite the bender. <laughs> Oh no. oh no. And then when he like gets off the phone, a beautiful woman is standing there, which he should have trauma. He should be like, no, 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 But instead it's just like a beautiful woman's there that he doesn't know. And she's like, hey, like you're awake after our three day banging session. Oh. You want breakfast? And he's like, yeah, and she's I like, guess. you look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> and he's like, hmm. And he doesn't put it together. He's not like, oh, are you messing with me? Right. By the way, she's not. I mean, she is messing with him, but not because she's related to the ghost. Right. She just used those words, but it's a coincidence. Yeah, completely. Right. So he okay, just, I was going to say, that would be weird. Uh-huh. But what about that ghost thing, though? Yeah, well, forget it. I'll, I'll, he'll deal with it again. But oh, like for okay. now, he's like, ah, that was three days ago. Right. So he gets dressed. He's like, I got to get the hell out of here. So he's like, sorry, uh, you can keep like the room, I guess. <laughs> Bye. So he leaves, and she's like, man, like he's cute. Too bad that... He slept all three days, and I was paid to watch him. <laughs> I would have loved to have banged him. So she's just letting him think that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. by the way, she's not like evil. She's just, I guess, a prostitute of some kind. Right. <laughs> but she was hired by DeWitt to nursemaid or basically monitor Stark while they puppeted him. Right, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well now, so now this doesn't work. No. Properly, no. because the chip shouldn't be able to do that, mm -hmm. because it was just supposed to transmit signals from his brain to his limbs, yes. not transmit like to his brain instructions on where to go. Yes. So actually, negative ten points. Now you just lost all. I think the you lost points. five. You, points. you lost your science points. Yeah, I. Agree. There were only si negative five science points. I think just just subtract five. Give him five science. F points. All right, five science points. <laughs> so Stark goes home in a limo, and he's met by protesters because like. Nuke you was a disaster, and Stark yeah. never responded to it. Just Iron Man showed well, up, just saved the day, and then he disappeared yeah. for three days. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know how it looks. You know, like Nuke you had a reactor leak. Iron Man threw it in the ocean, and then the owner went on vacation for three days. <laughs> yeah. Also, Stark's having like labor difficulties. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of, uh, okay. he's having supply problems of every kind. Yeah, no, there, like, all right, there, 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 are, uh, there are protests about like the unions and stuff at Stark International. So. Oh, jeez, he's just, ugh, it's a that's rough like, time oh, this to be is, Stark. That's the, that's the fun you get from when you're reading Iron Man. Yeah. So See, It's hard to be a well-paid uh, executive or owner of a company. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, all fun and games. Stark's home, he jumps into the Iron Man suit, and he goes back to nuke you to like see what's going on, assess the damage. And when he gets there, uh, he finds that like some laser beam cut a hole underneath him, and then he drops through the hole, even what? though he has armor. But he mentions that like the uh, the laser beam that cut the hole also melted the ground and clogged his boot jets, so he oh, just falls. His boot jets so when he lands, he's surrounded by crystals, or like, like he's in some <laughs> kind of giant diamond, and all the crystals are like reflecting Titanium Man, like he's in a funhouse. Oh. And he's like, "All right, Titanium Man, listen." I'm sorry I let you die. It's not really my fault. And then Titanium goes, yeah, sweet, I knew it, I knew it. Because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You may not remember the original no, Armor I Wars. I don't. In the original Armor Wars, you know, Stark goes nuts and he's like, everyone's gotta pay. They're yes. gonna get my armor. He even attacks beloved fan favorite character Stingray. And as a result, he has to fight Captain America, who at the time was the captain, but doesn't matter. Point is, he's persona non grata. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is Tony Stark, fires Iron Man. I love that I got to use quotations for both, all three things. But he fires Iron Man and hires a new person to be Iron Man. Okay. And so he's been like 
sticking to that story. Like, yeah, I had it. I, I look, Iron Man. I built the suit, right? And then I hire people to be Iron Man. Yeah. The right. guy who's been Iron Man since like the '60s went rogue and attacked everybody, and he's fired. That's super convenient. Like every time Iron Man does anything wrong, yeah. oh well, that guy that who guy? you don't know and never saw yep. is fired, and now there's a totally new guy, and I promise it's definitely a new guy, and I didn't just tell you that I fired the old one and keep him. Yeah. Or that nobody I am would buy him. that, or that I am him <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, and I've either been lying way, to you since the beginning. Yeah. nobody would buy it. No, who? <laughs> who did you fire? Right, who What's was the social security he's number? Wanted Can for I murder. interview him? Yeah, like what? Well, she <laughs> tries to arrest him. I think it's a whole thing. <laughs> but so, so the whole story has been new Iron Man. Right. So Titanium Man is like, no, nah, you killed me. You can't fool anybody that there's a new Iron Man in there. You're the guy who murdered me. And so Iron Man's like, look, dude, I'm sorry I killed you. And then he's like, aha! Oh, no. And reveals that he's not Titanium Man, he's the Living Laser. And the Living Laser is another classic Iron Man villain who didn't always look like this. It wasn't always a Living Laser. <laughs> he did call himself that, but he used to look like a guy. Hmm. Uh, he, by the way, is from like New Brunswick or something. But like, what? Yeah. Oh. But Parks was uh, a guy who went through a portal at one point and came out a Living Laser. And that's all I'm going to get into about <laughs> him being a Living Laser. He had laser powers, but like, they were, you know, outside his body. Uh, now he is like light and can become lasers and shit. And that's where the lasers. Well, how would you from. defeat him then? <laughs> it's really hard. So <laughs> living laser, like I'm living laser, and you're like at, at this point you go, okay, where is the armor war? Like and how can I cut to it? <laughs> yeah, we, I was uh, gonna ask about that. Yeah, uh, like two books in or something, and oh no, yeah. I guess it's only one book in. It's but like there's no... it's like three. <laughs> oh jeez. So uh, living laser attacks Iron Man, and he's like, I knew that you were the real Iron Man. I needed to like smoke you out by pretending to be Titanium Man and admit. Make you admit that right. you killed that there is him. only the one. Because he, only he would know something like that. Right. So then they fight. To what end? Because I want to kill you because you're a jerk. Because I'm a living laser and you're my arch nemesis. Exactly. So Iron Man fights living laser. This is DeWitt's guys go like, wow. Yes. Okay. They're like, his heart rate is freaking out right now. He's rich. He's on a roller coaster. Or, exactly. Uh, driving a sports car or... Uh, yeah. See, now I don't understand why they would get his heart rate from the chip, but not what he can see from his eyes. Because right. if you can get his vital signs right. from this chip... Well, we don't have, like, little cam... We can't... That, that would be impossible. Seeing, like, through his eyes, having little cameras in there or something. I can just I can just monitor... The chip reads what he's... Doing. If your Apple Watch can tell you what your pulse rate is, then I imagine that a chip attached to your nervous system... Only if it was designed them, with a pulse rate well, monitor. Clearly it was, because it was made by them. It's an well, espionage that's device. That's it's a, true. It's I actually guess, like deep surveillance. I guess it can have whatever they want. Well, it's just true. too hard to make it. But shouldn't see Tony know that? Eyes. Yeah. Well, so uh, he trusted that it did what the brochure said, and not all this extra stuff. Well, that's true. That's why he acquired the company. <laughs> so what happens is Dewitt is like, I don't know what's happening, but he's freaking out. And then the Mars twins appear, and they reveal themselves to the reader, <laughs> and you're like, who? Because I guarantee you, I don't read ninety anymore. percent of the Iron Man readers were like, I don't, I don't know what. I don't know who they are. Yeah. And You're just Burns, introducing new characters for no reason. Right. And nobody, no editor goes, uh, Mars Twins, pick up Namor on sale now. Nobody. Jeez. And I'm like, what? What are you that's doing? You're, you're missing your that's step there. That's like weird. a Marvel move. Yeah. yeah. That's very strange. So the Mars Twins are like, look, do it. Quit dicking around with Tony Stark. Like, we did the whole machinations with the chip and stuff and hired you to do it and blah da da. They're clearly the masterminds behind so everything. So how did moving him to San Francisco like They were faster? testing it. They're just screwing around. So like go to oh. San Francisco. Yeah, but DeWitt has other plans because he's like, I, I hate this guy. Like I oh. hate Iron Man. Well, Tony Stark. I see. So he wants to destroy Tony Stark yes. and the twins are like, no, this is like a corporate like move. Yes. I don't care about destroying him. Well, I just We can't kill him. He can't like send us wire transfers if he's right. dead. <laughs> right, I see. So they tell him, like, knock it off, and they test it by turning Stark off. Oh. <laughs> so he's just like, clang! And the living laser's like, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Hey. <laughs> hey, uh, playing possum won't, won't work on... Dude, for real? No! <laughs> I want you to suffer! I'm not gonna just kill you! Ah! And so he leaves. He leaves? Yeah. So he just bails. 
Why would he leave? Why wouldn't he just wait? I know. Or like poke him or... He does poke him and he's like, what the hell are you doing? Or like take his helmet off and be like, oh, yeah. it's Tony he, Stark. Yeah, he, right? do, he doesn't care. No, I, I want to defeat him at his best. At, in his prime. So... Would it be easier to defeat him if you knew who he was? Yeah. So then I... So Living Laser leaves. But Iron Man is still like, clang. So then the emergency crews come in. And they're like, hello, dink, dink, dink. And they can't get it off. Because like, it's got like right. defensive mechanisms. Right, you can't just take it off. Yeah. And so they're like, he's dead. <laughs> like, right. Well, he can't get a pulse or anything yeah, through so all this armor. Well, I guess he's send dead. send him back to Stark. Yeah. They're like, Iron Man's dead. So they like load him up on a gurney and they like pull him out. And Tony's like, if I get to the hospital, they're going to like saw this thing off. And I'm going to be in there and be like, hey. But he is conscious? Yeah. Will he remember this later? Yes. No, they just turned his body off. Oh. Isn't going to tip him off that something's happening? Oh, yeah. Like, Tony Stark's a smart guy. It's not like Not we're... that smart. Not oh. smart enough to get to the bottom of this. Uh, he just thinks his chip failed, probably. Uh, it's not quite... No, he's like... Eventually, he does come to the conclusion that, like, the chip is responsible for what's going well, on. Well, he, he was smart enough to build the Iron Man armor. <laughs> right. And he should be run this building, anything. yeah. But, like, wouldn't... All right, no, like, regardless of if he's able to figure this out for... Plot reasons. Yes. Shouldn't the twins be concerned about tipping off the guy who built the Iron Man armor that like something's going on? Maybe he should investigate his chip. Oh yeah, he does. No, that's exactly. But thinking, isn't but why that would, stupid? Why would this be? Why would they have wanted to turn him off? Right. They 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 just they're they're so confident in their plans and schemes that like they are able to. Plus, Dewitt is like, no, it'll be really messed up if I do this. Right. You I know, just want to torture it. It'll be like that song one from Metallica. <laughs> And he'll be just stuck in his own body. Right. I just want him to suffer. Exactly. Okay. okay. And that's and he is. Like it's yeah. It's horrific. We see like this like, cross section of like him just I can't move. You're just sweating? Yes. That's really gross. I know. <laughs> it just smells like burnt leathery bacon. In so, there. so eventually he's like, okay, I've gotta like I gotta do something. So he tries to wirelessly connect with the drone armor. Oh. He's like, maybe I okay, this is gonna be tough. Because I can't like consciously move my body right but maybe i if my mind is still working i can i can reach out using my armor and its wireless capabilities from 1991 to puppet the other armor uh -huh. and so what's great is the drone armor shows up the armor that was so convincing in the in the stark room mm -hmm. that he tricked Rhodes into thinking that the drone was him uh that this the defeat that was defeated by living laser was a drone and the real iron man right shows up to pick up the to drone. scoop up the drone and leave with it. Ah. Which of course he does. Um, um excuse me. Um <laughs> you can see eyeballs in this Oh, he's able to close those. And he does beforehand. When he's fighting living laser, he has to close everything. So oh, like, okay. Cuz he's cuz he's he's dealing with like lasers and if it gets in like it yeah, could if it got his him. eye, it would blind him. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the, the mouth hole. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's They weird. don't hear breathing. <laughs> They should. <laughs> so no, it's soundproof armor. That's true. Oh, well, the okay. armor is still activated. At least it's able to. They'd hear like they'd hear fans going. And stuff. Yeah, it's covering <laughs> up the sound. Just, the, just the breathing. <laughs> it sounds like like an overclocked computer. <laughs> okay. How embarrassing. I know it's really hard. <laughs> he drops up Iron Man on a couch. Rhodes there is like, whoa, man, I saw you on TV. That was really embarrassing. Like it's a good thing that was the drone. He's like, it's not. I'm in there. Like, he's able to talk through the oh, drone. Oh, through the drone. What does it sound like, then? It just sounds like him. Because it's like, it's... He just made it have his voice. Does Iron yeah. Man have a voice? Oh. It no. must. It can't just sound like... Yeah, he doesn't, like, Stark. put it through, like, a system. It's not like he has, like, an AI voice generator that, like, sounds like Christopher no. Walken or anything. It's just... Yeah, they don't really talk about it. But he had to put one in the drone. Yeah. And he just made it sound like himself? That I, wouldn't make any sense. Well, it, he's talking through the drone. Yeah. Well, so it must have a speaker on it. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so yeah. It, I don't so, know. And it must have a software that makes a human sounding voice. Yeah. Yeah, and it sounds like him. That'd be a mistake. I if agree. You could recognize him. But he talks all well, the time. Well, I guess he could say, like, no, I put my, I, I Tony Stark, had Built my the armor, voice. So it's my voice. Be the voice. Exactly. Okay. So. Because <laughs> I'm just that full of myself. Yes. <gasps> so he reveals to Rhodes, like, no, it's me. I'm trapped in my body. I don't know what's going on. It's really scary. Hell, you have to get me out of this thing. I am sweating like you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. Armor oh. Wars. Armor Wars 2. <laughs> He's just a sweaty man trapped is, inside his yeah. armor. That's the There's fight. No armor wars That's happening right. at all. Yeah. So uh, Dewitt's like, all right, we've had an, we've, you know, he's been off for like a couple hours. Can we turn him back on now? And uh, you know, the, the hey, Mars. Hey, when seeing this on TV, Iron Man's dead. He just won't <laughs> he just move. Turned off. Just turned off. That's weird. Yeah. 
Anyway, so the, the twins... Uh, oh, also don't forget that, like, you know, in addition to being an incestuous twin couple, mm -hmm. uh, they're also an abusive incestuous right. couple, so he's always beating on her. Mm. And uh, DeWitt is like, you're so beautiful. Why are you allowing this man to beat on you? And she's like, man, know your place, DeWitt. You're an employee. We're never going to bang. Also, I'm in love with Namor. <laughs> like, unless you uh, live in the ocean, I don't want to know you. have wing feet. <laughs> right? So... Uh, they turn off the like dead protocol or whatever on Stark. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, uh, that was messed up. I need like 12 showers. I don't yes, know what's going to happen. Yeah, I need 12 showers. <laughs> While he's talking to Rhodes about clearly sensitive information that would absolutely reveal that he's Iron Man, there's a security guard that's watching all this, monitoring it. He's a mole for the Mars Corporation. <laughs> oh my and, God. Uh, he doesn't put two and two together that he is Iron Man. And he's funneling DeWitt information about what Stark's up to because, of course, they don't have access to his eyes. Right. So I needed to hire, like, a guy to work in Stark. And he's, like, by the way, a loyal Stark employee, or at least he was, until it turns out that DeWitt's paying, like, a million dollars a day or some insane number. Yeah, some number that would be unnecessarily high. Exactly. To pay off a security guard. Yep. They are actually puppeting his body, like, leg and arm oh. at a time. Oh. Though I so have no idea how they... See. But they would definitely need to see through his eyes, but they also can't. Because here is the team of men and women... That control him. Okay, nervous system ready. Right leg ready. Left leg ready. Right arm ready. <laughs> Circulatory system ready. Okay, I feel like left arm has a lot less to do <laughs> than I do because he's running an arm and I'm running the circulatory system. That's amazing. Cerebral cortex ready. You're running the cortex? You're running his whole body? I'm making his sweat system go into overdrive. <laughs> hey, you over there, what's your job? I don't want to say it. No, come on, what is it? <sighs> sphincter ready. <laughs> ah! All right, sphincter boy, let's go. Oh. I mean, if you had to control his whole body, you would actually probably need like hundreds of people to maintain all the like right? hormones <laughs> and like glucose levels yeah. and like everything. Oh yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense actually. When you think about it. Yeah. So, uh, but <sighs> so they so they 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 they. That's roll. like negative fifteen science points. <laughs> Keep keep track of all. So <laughs> they, is that what the woman was for? Was she just there the whole time and be like, okay, walk in a straight line. Okay, now what? Now turn right. He's gonna hit something. I promise you, she was just there to watch him. She's just there going like, okay, he didn't die. Like checking his pulse, making sure he's not. No, he just laid there, unconscious. You yeah, maybe they're checking but to make first sure that he had to somehow get there. Maybe they're training the circulatory guy. He yeah. wasn't doing yeah. so well, and they're yeah. like, all right, you better keep an eye on this. We, we never, we never get closure on it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So then they they throw him into you know action mode, and he's just like, nur, nur, and he leaves. <laughs> and so Rhodey's like, hmm. But like, how would they know which way he's going? Someone must be monitoring him. So then he goes into the security room and he beats the living crap out of the guy who's there. And he's like, you're a big jerk. Wait I a minute. I can't believe that you did that. They started puppeting him while Rhodes was with him? Yes. Why? Uh, just to fuck with him. Because like, they didn't know Rhodes was there or thought he was No, they're watching notice. him. They know. They're just like, nah. Like, there's nothing they can do. They can't stop us. So they just didn't think that Rhodes would conclude that the security guard must have been in on it. Yeah. Okay. So Rhodes like <sighs> literally go. kicks the door in and just That's beats awesome. the crap out of the guy and then proceeds to interrogate him about right. like what's going on. Okay. I really like some of the coloring in this book. Yeah. And the art's pretty good. No, I love yeah. the... Like if you're not a like, Rabita fan... Right, you're not gonna really like it, but you will but like it is... more than you would now. Yeah, this is, this is, I get why, like I, 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 I wax and wane with him, but like I get why people like it. From yeah. This. Like this is, like, I'm not a big Iron Man fan, but there's a lot of really cool stuff he's doing in this book. I agree. Uh, Paul Becton and Joe Roses are on color duties for this, and I think they do a nice job yeah, of like, enhancing it's, it. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, crap, who inks this? Because that would be nice to know. Bob Wyacek inks it, and uh, for my money, some of the best inking on Ramita's work. Yeah. Like, Ramita likes to work with Klaus Janssen a lot, which, like, I appreciate the idea and why you want to, because, like, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he makes yeah, your work look real, like, heavy. Yeah, no, there's, like, there's, like, something, it's more... It's clean. It's really, it's like... It's clean. It, it actually feels lighter. Yeah. It does. And I like that earlier when we were talking about, like, the collapse of things. Yeah. Like the way that they decided oh, yeah. to... Oh, yeah, just, just marker, like, yeah, etchings, it's just, basically. Yeah, it's just cool. Yeah. Like they, it's a really interesting treatment I feel right? like He's... I hadn't seen before. No, it's true. And the, it... the fight scenes are really good. All the, like, normal stuff looks 
lame to me. Yeah. Like just regular scenes of people like walking around in an office, yeah. I it, find like really poorly it, done. Well, it's just, it's just, they, they, well, it's clearly, just uninteresting. you could tell Ramita Jr. is as uninterested as yeah. you are. Like, yeah. So he's just like, he's just getting through it. Yeah, yeah. That's why like Stark looks so simple. Yeah. Like the the simple design of Stark but like is like this just, stuff. I, yeah, this I'm looks great. all about it's an action this. sequence. He's yeah. just he's born. Although this run move is every time he's running, he just does that pose. <laughs> sure. Which I've seen in every John Romita Jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is fine. You know what? Whatever. Yeah. So he runs. Rhodes. So Rhodes runs to Stark to stop him, and Stark is being puppeted and just beats the crap out of Rhodes. It seems oh. like it'd be really complicated. Like you're just doing yes. test runs, and like your first test run was just getting right? to San Francisco, and now you're like, let's have a complicated fight. Right. <laughs> are, like, are, so much system. You gotta be ready, yeah. honey. With someone who knows how to fight, because I just watched him beat somebody up. Yeah. So it's not like he's beating up on like a, an amateur. Yeah. No, it's true. Sphincter, you better tighten up. That's right. <laughs> get, the, get the ninjas on the line or upload <laughs> kung fu into the program or whatever. But uh, ultimately, Rhodes gets the upper hand and just like, just knocks him unconscious uh, or nice. out. Like the, they, they, he beats the espionage out of him <laughs> and just carries him into a room that he knows there's no cameras. Oh, if we can only see out of his eyes. Yeah, well, that's how they've been puppeting them the whole time. So they had a guy in, in the right. security center. Right, but like in the building, he eventually he has to leave the building. Yes. Then you can't see anything. Yes, well, my assumption is that they like puppeted him into a limousine where they turned him off. He's like, <laughs> and then just right. rode the limo until he got to San Francisco. He just drove. No, they had a guy yeah. drive it, you know? Yeah, yeah, they just had a chauffeur. Yeah, so. Rhodes straps Stark down to keep him from leaving. Right. Because he was clearly going someplace. Right. And he's in like the Iron Man armor room where he knows there's no cameras, so it's not compromised. He puts Stark into the Iron Man armor. And so Stark, using his brain, forces the armor to move his body. Like he did before when he, when was, he was paralyzed. First paralyzed but only his legs. So he can in, move his arms freely. He's into the dr he's in the drone armor, not the armor he was in earlier when he couldn't move after they turned him off. It, it, no, he's in the armor because the drone, you can't put a head in there. Oh. You, you so see, then why he's trying to put it on. He can't put he, his head in there. Why couldn't he do <laughs> so that he before? he can't get his head in there. No. <laughs> what? He could, because he didn't train his brain to do it. He, oh. he, was, well, he, he had was, previously, though. He forgot. He, he was able to move his legs. Like, move the armor to move his legs, not his entire oh, body. Oh, I assumed when you right. were describing... Incremental change. No, no, oh, I okay. get that, but like, but when he was fighting the living laser and they turned him off, but he was still awake, why didn't he do it then? Because he didn't know that he could, nor... He was still trying to like figure out why it was happening in the first place. Now that he knows he's being puppeted, he needs to force himself to like re-puppet like, his body. Yeah, but like, but. Well, he, you already knew how to do that. Yeah, like, and, and you called But he the only drone. did like half his body. But Remember he, before he was doing it with just his legs. But this just happened, like he's You're literally. You're talking about drone, like the, moving the drone as well? Like, yes. Because, yeah, look, I don't know what to tell <laughs> and, you. And like this all just happened. Like he was walking with Rhodes in his robe after taking a shower after all this just happened. Yep. There wasn't enough time to train his brain. What is in the shower for 15 minutes? Well, he's like, no, oh, I'm gonna train needed, my brain. He just okay, needs got to, like, it. Think about it. He's got to like, think about it. He was for a... he was so shocked before. Oh, he okay. Think we to need to explain. Try like, to move the. Yeah. <laughs> but he was being punched by the living laser, I guess, and he yeah. didn't. No, it was really like look. He was busy. Now he is forcing his brain to make his body move against its will. Like his body is like trying to like move. Oh, he's actually moving his body, or is the, he's moving the suit? He's moving the like, suit around and stuff. his body. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's it's a nightmare. Which I feel and like would hurt you. It does. Right? It irrevocably damages him. Oh. He's like, okay. I am doing and, and like this doesn't come up until like Armor Wars chapter five or six or whatever. But like huh. he basically is like, the more I do this, the more irrevocable damage I am doing to my entire body. So why body. would he do it at all? Like because Rhodes, he needs to be Iron Man. Like Rhodes to, had him Iron strapped down. Why people? couldn't he just use the drone and still be Iron Man? Right. Because I need to be Iron Man. <laughs> Because I am Iron Man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, hubris. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have to be there, right? <laughs> I want to be there when they're cheering when I save the day. Yeah. If Who's I'm not they? There, you know, no, the, the, the legions of fans. That <laughs> oh, I have. sure. So uh, yeah, like so, it's been like a day, and Dewitt is like, "What the hell? <laughs> like, where is he? Why is he moving against our will? And why, like, you know?" And they're, and they're just like full day, like full full throttle. Just like, make his just body do things. Make his body do things until he shows up. Somewhere. Until he shows up, or we see his body actually doing those things. 
Meanwhile, his body's just trapped in the armor, like, Neh. and so they like they like freeze the armor in the room, mm -hmm. and they take the arm off, so his bare arm is out, <laughs> and it just starts freaking out. Oh my god! Like attacking roads, and just just just, <laughs> and it's it's really freaking weird. That is really weird. Yeah. It it, it is a nightmare. This yeah. this book is a this straight is a up nightmare. nightmare. The idea that he's just a he is a straight up prisoner in his own skin. Yeah. Okay. And then only in the armor. That's that's like admittedly oh. cool. Can he win the war? Oh my god. Against oh. his own body. No. Two. It's, it's not Armor Wars two. No. It's a different. And it never will be. Thing. But listen, we didn't get into B plot. I promise you. I'm just gonna do B plot straight up after this. Okay. So, and maybe that will will indicate the armor war. So okay, I still don't know what they're trying to accomplish with this. What okay, is wait, the plan? Wait, wait there's okay. two different plans, right? right, right. The, hang on, let me try. Let me try. What? The twins want to use Stark to essentially get more money yes. and to ruin him. In yes. what one, way? Like, like he's get, going to like make boneheaded business decisions. He's going to send them money like through like shell corporations. Because like, like if he's going to make him do things that he doesn't want to do that would result in net gains for their own business ventures. So that's their That's thing. a very amorphous plan. Yeah, okay. but they're, they're not and really even half interested. Remember, they're also trying to defeat Namor. And right. DeWitt wants to get him there and kill him. Yes. Okay. So DeWitt they, just wants to hurt Yeah, Stark. there's like two different, which he is honestly right. doing. He's yeah, he's winning. He doesn't well, know. He's achieving that. Yeah, he's, DeWitt is uh, winning the armor war. Like, right? What is his plan <laughs> to hurt him? He's gonna bring him there and then. Well, first I'm gonna like make him freak out. Well, he doesn't know about the armor. So uh, yeah, but he's like, I just want him to come here and then I'm gonna slap him around, I'm gonna kill him. Uh, I guess okay. he's like, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'm the big, I'm gonna do my monologue. Yeah. I've been practicing. Right. Uh-huh, absolutely. So Even though I was invented for this book. get him in front of him. That's right. Okay, yeah. Fine, all right. So the Living Laser returns, and Iron Man's like, oh. I'm the only one who can fight him. So he goes to fight Living Laser, and Living Laser's like, OK, you're back. Ha ha, great. And then they fight. And uh, why'd, you, why, why'd you pass out for no reason? Exactly. Back that was weird. So uh, Iron Man's about to get killed by Living Laser, and then Wonder Man and Hank Pym show up. Oh, oh OK. Yeah. And Living Laser's like, Yes. Is, and, is this uh, just a running gag <laughs> with the Living Laser? Where no, he's he doesn't just like, leave, but like, oh, okay. uh, he does hand Wonder Man his ass. Oh. And then... Uh, Wait, Living Laser kicks Wonder Man's ass? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he has a laser. He's a laser and Wonder Man is pure energy, but he's also a guy, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he, he beats the crap out of Wonder Man. And then... Oh, the, the originally, <laughs> when Iron Man was fighting Living Laser the first time, mm -hmm. uh -huh. he was like, I could just, like, shoot him with, with like, laser? a special beam that would dissipate him. Mm -hmm. and, oh. But it might kill him. But I won't do that. And that's right. how Living Laser gets the upper hand. I see. So then Living Laser beats Wonder Man. And uh -huh. he's like, hey, Iron Man, what are you going to do now? And Iron Man's like, before, I felt bad about killing you, but I don't need more blast. <laughs> he just kills him? Well, well he, he does something that might kill him, but he's not sure. He, he right. literally dissipates his form across the planet. Wow. Like, and he's like, it will take him hundreds of years to reconstitute himself. It will take it him. It will not, but he believes it does. It will take him thousands of episodes to find each of his pieces, and then I'll <laughs> defeat him in one episode. That's right. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then, I get the Iron Man formula. Or, right? yeah. or he'll reconstitute himself right away, because that was the first trick he learned. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, very nice. So then uh, Wonder Man and Hank Pym leave, and that's that story. Wow. They just show up do nothing to help. Hey, and then buddy, leave. we were just flying overhead and thought we should help our pal Iron Man. Yes. Yep. Oh, I got beaten. Sorry, Iron Man. Yeah. Well, well I'll just use my secret weapon and dissipate. Man, anyway. it's almost like the writer didn't know how to solve this problem. <laughs> and, and so... So he does. Uh, also, Wonder Man is a book on sale now. Uh, and huh. If you like Wonder Man and his adventures, if you, if you enjoyed watching him, just get his candy ass handed to him by <laughs> a living laser, then maybe you'll what enjoy him, him trying do? to be a... Oh, he just watched. Did he backhand anybody? He didn't do, he didn't. <laughs> That's a signature move, but he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, I could, he's just thinking to himself, I could unleash my backhand and solve this problem right now. But, but I don't want to hear it from Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's been days, and Tony Stark hasn't like said anything or appeared. And so... Everyone <sighs> assumes he's dead. Or yeah, that so nuke that you thing that he hasn't, uh, he dealt, hasn't with. dealt with. Uh, so Rhodes impersonates Stark using like holographic technology or whatever. What? Yeah, that's right. They can do that. Uh, he doesn't go anywhere. He just like sends a tape, basically, of like him being like, "Hey, it's me. I'm fine. Sorry." And uh, no, Stark is still in the armor. Yeah, I mean, he they, would be. It's like they were like put like push the lever that makes Stark's body do whatever we want and rob his brain of his ability to control it and just leave it that way for the next seven days. Right. 
Because he's like, I'm just stuck in the armor now. Like, I'm Iron Man all the time. Right. This book should have been called Iron Man all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Iron Man 24 7. <laughs> I said, how am I going to bang anybody like this? Right? I, have, I have not input. I put the, the little door in yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I like assume they have to empty stuff? him. They do they like... They have to empty him? Oh, my oh. God. I assume that they... Well, it's... I believe they intravenously feed him. Like, they, uh. they use, like, liquids. It's, or do you have to change horrific. me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they don't have to change. They have to open the trap door, and then they just have to mop up afterwards. Get, get the trough. <laughs> I guess you could go to the toilet. You could have oh, the yeah. suit <laughs> take him to the toilet. And he just stands in the shower and just empties. And then uh, somebody has to deal with it. But it's just... It's, it's, I it, mean, is it... Never mind. He could just go back. He could just go in the back. Like, just outside. Like, yeah. you know, like an animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those bodies no control. Like, it's just... Uh, yeah, I know. Control. It's, well, it's like his body... Control or not, there's some things that are just like... Forces of nature, <laughs> you know, like you know, you may you may want to ho ho how, however much you want to hold it, you know, that damn breaking. <laughs> so uh, Dewitt's like freaking out because he's like, it's been like days, right? And I've like I've turned it all the way to eleven, right? And I just saw him on TV or whatever, and exactly. he's not doing what I told him. And to he's do. like, he has a box of scraps conversation with all like the doctors because <laughs> they're like, he's like, what's happening? And they're like, we don't we don't know, like, mm -hmm. we have no idea. And he's like. And so he just leaves and he like he just smashes all of his shit. He's just like, I'm gonna get my revenge on this guy. And you as the reader are like, but like why though? Like who cares? <laughs> uh, so that like Stark is missing. And Stark is basically like, I guess I'll be Iron Man forever, and like Stark is dead. He doesn't really declare that. Even though but, it's like, like ruining his body. Yeah. 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 Well, well he's like, eventually I'll die. I'll like, wear least out. It, at least it gives me ability to move. Yes. That's better. Right? Uh, so what he should do is just like Call the Avengers yeah. and have them monitor him. Call the him. Fantastic Four. Right, and go, okay, uh, take off my like robot arm, inject a, well, no, I, I keep my secret identity, and I can't tell the Avengers or the Fantastic Call Four. Call them as Iron Man. No, I know. Yeah, but eventually, no, because I got to come out. Like, the thing is, he's got to be, he's got to come up with a goddamn cover story where it's like, okay, so I'm Iron Man. I'm going to take off my arm. Then you're gonna put a subdermal tracking chip in my he arm to whoa, whoa, follow no, 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 my no, body. No, 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 he doesn't have to be Iron Man. Couldn't it just be that, like, like follow Tony Stark to wherever he goes or and then rescue like, him? Or he's like, you know, like I was having a problem, so I put myself in my own armor, mm -hmm. even though I'm not Iron Man. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, I like that. That's like, the only way I could think of to restore. Yeah, yeah, and, so yeah. Like, and I always, I can't be in here, so you have to help me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve Rogers, who knows he is Iron Man, yes. is like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Stark. Uh, Tony. Uh, all right, I think we've be reached. a lot easier. Yeah, I think we've, I mean, we've, we've come to the station at this point. All right. That's enough. Okay. No, 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 no. You're Iron Man, okay? No, no, I fired the other guy. No. And there's okay, a new guy. No, no it's fired. It's, <laughs> it's enough. How many I, more hopes are we going to jump through, Tony? And I, That's I, why Civil War happened. <laughs> So there's this whole annoying subplot where, like, protesters who work for Stark, who want answers from Stark, uh, like, storm... Oh, my God. <laughs> ...the compound. Wow. And they come in with, like, a monster truck a la Bigfoot, <laughs> and they're throwing Molotov cocktails. Oh, my God. So uh, Stark just, like, springs into action as Iron Man. He's like, I gotta stop these guys. He, like, he, like literally digs a moat to stop them using lasers. He's just oh. he's smashing trucks, and people are like, Oh, Iron Man could show up, but Stark isn't here, boo! Like, he sent his lackey to attack us, and then... They're like, that's his bodyguard. Right. You're attacking him. That's his job. Right? <laughs> so then, like, his body starts to give out because oh. it's, like, taxed to the brim. Right. right. Well, it shouldn't matter. Isn't he controlling the armor with his brain? Yeah, but his brain controlling the armor, controlling his body, which is being controlled by a chip <laughs> in his spine, is making his, like, entire nervous system shut down. Yeah, well, because he's, like, his muscles are trying to do one thing, and, and he's, his, he's just using right. his, like, And servos and gears no, are no, making no. them do other things. But if you say that <laughs> if, if his mind gave out, that would be different, because shouldn't yeah. his mind be able to keep the armor all, like, standing erect? It's It's... It's like you pushing against a thing the whole time. It's horrible. So he's like having a heart attack, essentially. Like, no, I get right. that. But like, wasn't he using the armor to stop his body from moving? Yes. So it was like his... yeah. But it's moving around the movement. But then he also had... Yeah, I think it's worse for his his armor to have to control him. Yes. Because then it's like... It's trying to walk to DeWitt, right? And yeah. his armor is making this movement do all kinds of other things yeah, 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 instead. Yeah, no, I get it. I, no, I understand like, that's that it's... I totally understand that this body is... 
is done. Yeah. But sh the armor shouldn't collapse unless his brain collapses. Well, no, his yes. armor isn't collapsing, but his brain, yeah. his, well, his, his body is starting to give out because like eventually you're going to tax it too much. Like if he, if, if, if the if the people running it are like, I want you to run like a marathon until like the end of the week, his body will just stop inevitably because he's worked on it too hard. Okay. Yeah, but he could just like break his bones and shit. Right. Like, with the, <laughs> like with the suit, just That's make true. the suit keep doing it. Right? You know? <laughs> but I guess true. if his, <laughs> <laughs> he's just a flesh pile. His, oh. his brain though, does your brain is dependent on the rest of your body? Yeah. yeah. So if you wear out every muscle and like yeah. tendon and everything in your body, then your body's gonna be like, well, I'm not sending any more blood to your brain because the whole thing is falling That's apart. That's true. So like, eventually, you just won't be able to like function. Right. right. It sounded like it said something about a heart attack. Yeah. Well, he says it feels like a heart attack. Oh, okay. He's like, I can't feel my body, but this <laughs> has all the hallmarks. Right. My brain of... knows that it's it's real bad. Yes. <laughs> and oh, so he just oh, no. falls out of the sky we're and going like, down. Yeah. Oh, we're going down. <laughs> we're going down, Tony. <laughs> yeah. So he just like crashes into the pile of protesters who are just like. All right, Get so they start beating him with bats, sticks, and cinder blocks. Oh, the, uh, yeah. The, it's the Batman. <laughs> so, I mean, he did, like, smash their cars and stuff. Yeah. So. I mean, but they were... Yes, they were committing a crime. Yeah. But he tried to prevent them from committing the crime they were committed to committing. Exactly. So, <laughs> they, uh, so really, he's the jerk. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's just in the way. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So DeWitt is like, okay. Uh, so he gets a call, like a clandestine call, and he's like, ah, we're already great. Well, then fine. It's payback time. Give him his body back. He's like, blah. <laughs> oh. So he just gets up. And uh, he's still just be. But when he gets up, he now has full control of his body. He now feels oh. everything. Everything that he has been going through. And he just screams. It's like no sound I've ever heard coming out of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> a scream like maybe a man would scream if he could scream if he suddenly found himself buried in burning tar. Oh. Uh, Jarvis, record this for future uh, research. <laughs> Jarvis is an old butler that lives in Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Even the mob is startled. But they're There's like, yeah, let's get him here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and then he just blasts off and smashes, like literally through like a beach. He's just... Yeah. yeah, he's just like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, he's just trying to leave. And he's just he's just flying anywhere, like in mm. any direction. Rhodes gets into a helicopter, his patented armor, mm. and uh, flies after him. And then uh, eventually just grabs him with like a kind of like Clamp claw him. from the helicopter. Okay. And uh, he's like, hey man, turn off because your armor is more powerful than this helicopter. <laughs> and then he just takes him away. They, they do a body scan on him and he's like, your nervous system is shot. Mm. Like you, you need you need like weeks to you, recover. You'll never recover. Oh. Is what they're saying. Oh. Oh. No, they're like you're you have you have permanently damaged your body. Oh. And that's probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Maybe you should have just used the drone. <laughs> Maybe <you should> have <laughs> just, yeah. Maybe you should have just let the damn thing take you wherever you were gonna go, and then have I don't know Captain America kick him in the head. Yeah. Or at least have roads follow you. I, there's like so many things you could have done. So many yeah. things. So uh, St Tony Stark realizes like it's got to be the chip in my body. Yes. I don't know why I didn't think of it in the beginning. I don't know. So he proceeds to do like a scan of the chip because he's like, you know, why I didn't think about it because I was just so happy to be walking again. Oh, uh, it's like I need that chip though. It can't be the chip. If it's the chip, then I might not walk again. Yes. Like, I have to take the chip out because it's broken. Right. But it's funny what? because he's like, I gotta, I gotta think, like, and I can't because I'm in constant pain, so mm. I'll take a painkiller, which is a really bad idea because I have an addictive personality oh. and I'm a recovering alcoholic. I really don't want to get addicted to pain meds, which is actually more addictive at this point, uh, but whatever, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so it's great, like, good for you. Does he have like the computer make one? Like, oh, it, oh. it looks like it's being dispensed. Like it's like he programmed in what he needed. Yeah. I need uh, this much pain maybe it's like a, recovery. Maybe it's a, a healing computer. It's a doctor computer. Ooh. <laughs> it's, got, so, <laughs> it's got all kinds of stuff in there and then, you ask for a painkiller, it'll produce one. You can get penicillin, you can get whatever Boom. you want. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you need. Yeah. It's a fabricator. <laughs> so so he uh, he gets to work figuring out like what's going on. Mm. What who who owns the company? Who owned who owned the company that made this chip in the first place? Oh, the right. Mars Corporation. Okay. Yeah, the one you bought to get it in the first place? Right. Don't you remember that? <laughs> yeah, well I didn't investigate <laughs> it, I just needed to walk again. Uh -huh. So he does and he's like, okay. Uh, oh, and they saw like Mars's chopper, like monitoring where they were. Like mm. Rhodes noticed the Mars chopper, so he's okay. like, "Okay, I guess." Like I love Stark being like, "The Mars Corporation? 
Like it's not hammer or stain or anything. <laughs> like, I guess that makes sense. Like, they I guess are, there are lots of corporations. Right, and like <laughs> I've heard they're douches, but. Oh. Uh, I so guess, he is familiar with it. He's like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll go. So I'm gonna put on my Iron Man armor, and I'm gonna kick the fucking shit out of him. Aren't you like, aren't you messed up, man? Yeah, yeah well, I took those painkillers, I'm feeling a lot better. Yeah. yeah. You took like one Tylenol. I'm feeling real good right now. <laughs> oh, you think that, that looks like, like Tylenol. Tylenol. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's LSD. I'm just, I'm just going for it. So he just goes to the Mars Corporation and just starts lasering shit. You can't do that. Sure I can. You have, no, you have, you have a- you I'll have, fire this guy. You have very little evidence as to what is happening right I, now. No. He, that's true. I mean, you are absolutely no, right. No, he's like, I know. But I, but I need to get to the bottom. I need this. I am pissed. He's like, here's the thing. Armor War should have ended two issues ago. So I gotta we go. Gotta, uh, you gotta, gotta speed it. things along. Oh, yeah. okay. So he just, Dives into the building, just blasts everything. There's like this gaggles of scientists. Oh my God! Iron Man's wrecking the place. What are we gonna do? He's, he's killed. He's destroyed billions of dollars worth of equipment. And we find out what Do It was up to. What was what, ready? My own dope armor. I'm no! gonna paint Iron Man in. No! It's just another. Iron Man story where yeah. he fights a guy in armor at the end. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> That's right. Hey, hey, Classic. Here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're doing this whole thing, right? And then right at the end, get this. Yeah. Get this. What? Get, get okay. the villain, right? Yeah. He's got to fight Iron Man. Yeah. So how is he going to do it? You think it's going to be with the chip, right? Like he's got a chip and it's going to somehow like... I guess. No. No. No, he's got his own big... <laughs> Armor. Oh. Because it's an armor war. Oh. Armor wars. So then every Iron Man book can be called Armor Wars because that's <laughs> no, basically how they no, all No, this end. one's called, no, but that, no. But this one's called Armor Wars. No, no, this, this, this is different. Yeah. This is very different. This is, this is very different. Because look at th this armor, uh, it doesn't have like a head. No. Unlike and, yeah. most of them. <laughs> and, and it's like, Purple. Yeah, it's purple. Yeah, it's purple. Yeah. He doesn't fight purple. So. Yeah. Armor. Also, it kind of looks like the drone from the beginning. Yeah. yeah it does. So. Yeah. It's so, so it's actually like poetry. It's right? actually it really. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's completely different. So Iron Man's like, I gotta fight this stupid guy. I don't even know who he is. Right. Like I don't I don't know who's in there. You know. So he's fighting this big purple robot. And he's like. I am gonna kill you. I'm gonna get revenge on you. He's like, what does this guy want from me? What? It's kind yeah. of pinkish magenta. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's more fuchsia. So he's like, it, I'm it getting retribution. Yeah, it depends on your, your perspective. I'm in on the panel. That's true. Yeah, well, how much shadow it's in. Yeah, so uh, Iron Man and DeWitt fight, and they like, you know, from the lowest dungeon to the <laughs> highest peak, they battle the fuchsia robot. I, and, I love uh, his stubby legs. Me his, too. Like, his little fat feet things. Right? The doomp. Yeah. So they're fighting, and he's just like, this is nuts. Like, what the hell? Oh, and Oh, also, this is nuts? Yeah. You do this, like, every other week. Oh, and Dewitt like, tells him to turn on the thing, make his body you, screw around, because now oh, I know it's Iron Man. What? So Dewitt knows he's Iron Man, so he's like, okay, flip the thing on Tony Stark. Nah. So he's like, oh, crap. Well, now he's got to fight against he's gotta fight his, his, own, his own body in. and this. Once you, enter, like, once you bring the drone into the realm of possibility, mm -hmm. the drone should be with you at all times. Yeah. yeah. It should, yeah. It actually, yeah. this should be the drone. Right. Yeah. So, oh, maybe it is the drone. So Iron Man fights this thing, and they're fighting throughout like the city, and they're smashing huge buildings and, and stuff. And people are like, "Okay, Tony Stark and Iron like he didn't hire a very good new Iron that Man. That new Iron Man is so. I don't understand. <laughs> where's the old one? Yeah, where's the red and uh, silver one? I like that one. Uh, he's supposed to be in jail. He was way better as yeah, he was Okay, to... yeah, whatever. It's way le It's way worse than. Yeah, it's worth it to let a murderer go free. Apparently, it's, it's all yeah. it's all about the devil, you know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the like it's great. Like he, he fights this guy. What, just, is, what weapons does this thing have? What does he? It has a it like an atomic cannon. <laughs> and, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> you 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 tell me. Oh. It's the nineties. <laughs> yeah. It's so they're fighting and just smashing each other, and then uh, ultimately, he's just beating him so bad that he's just, just sitting there. Like he's, Iron Man's just like I'm done. Like this guy's gonna freaking kill me. I don't even know why. Right. And then uh, Rhodey shows up in the armor. What? Oh, he's got his own armor? Yes. So there's another suit, in yeah. addition to the drone. There's, so there's, like, there's like there's like 40 suits. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. There's a whole row of them. And all those suits are not drones. Yeah. No. Only it, one is the drone. Only one is the drone. Really, like, the, all the drones, all the suits could be drones. <laughs> I mean, you just gotta you, put a different head on. You gotta put the thing in yeah. there. It's just, they, they shouldn't have shown that there's a head in yeah. one of the panels. They shouldn't right. have said, no, I can remote pilot all my armor. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was the mistake. Yes. Yeah. So Rhodey shows up and he's he, he punches DeWitt. And he's like, I really don't want to do this. Yeah, well no, he actually sings the Mighty Mouse theme. 
Oh. He says, here I come to save the day. And uh, you yeah, know, it's cute because like you know, the guy who's writing is like 45 years old. And uh, <laughs> so uh, DeWitt is like thrown up, he's like, whoa. And Iron Man immediately is like, Rhodey, way to go. And DeWitt's like, Jim Rhodes? That's who's in there? Mm-hmm. Of course. Like that's who substituted the arm. Oh my god. Like I'm 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 I'm, I'm figuring all kinds I'm of shit. I'm blowing out right this now. case yeah. wide open. Uh. Exactly. So you know, Rhodes like, okay, what do you want me to do, boss? Wait, how are we gonna do this? And Iron Man just immediately takes <laughs> he's like, you have an older armor where they like the, the battery packs on the outside of your of your armor, so he just pulls it off of him and proceeds to amplify himself and then and just obliterates DeWitt's armor. Oh. Uh, I love the idea that it like in that moment he's like, wait, now that guy knows who you are and I am, and we have no idea who that guy yes. is. We're not doing very well no. here. No. <laughs> We're over two right now. He literally just siphons power from Rhodes' armor and amplifies his own armor and then just blows that DeWitt was, away. That's not very that was not very hard. No. no. I just needed to be slightly stronger, which yes. I absolutely should have it's been with twice two. as strong. But uh, you still it's have an two. older armor though. It, it might not be fully twice as strong. That's true. Only it, one point eight times. And you had two Iron Man. Like I, I, I don't know. I know, I know. But yeah. we, we wrapped it Why up. Why does so. that Rhodey shoot him at the same time that you shoot him? Yeah. yeah. The same thing. We gotta save that for Iron Man too. So, <laughs> so like they they, blo- they I love they knock him into a building. The building freaking collapses, and like nice. the whole outer casing breaks off, and his face is revealed, and they're like. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know who that man is. <laughs> oh. He kept, no, yelling, he kept yelling about retribution. I, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. And then the rest of the building falls on him and crushes him to death. And they're like, well, I guess we'll never know. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What? what? And then they leave. And that's the end of Armor Wars 2. What? You literally never get to find out no, you why do. DeWitt. In, a, in an Iron Man annual that comes out like a year later, we find out that DeWitt's father invented an Iron Man armor that's very similar to the one that Stark invented, and he assumed that Stark stole those plans and then monopolized them. Wait, so it's Iron Man 2? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. (laughs) So That's amazing. Yeah, so like... I can't believe how much from the books, the random random handful of Iron Man books we've done has been in the movies. I know. Like... (laughs) Well, because there's only like five Iron Man stories. Right. You know, the only one that isn't in the movie is the one where he goes back in time and fights Doctor Doom. I mean, they should do that. Which I want. I would yeah. like that too. They should bring back Robert Downey Jr. just for that one. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he gets to. It's just Army of Darkness. <laughs> but with Doctor Doom. So, I, yeah. Uh, wow. Oh, so anyway, uh, he fights DeWitt again. And, you know, DeWitt's like. My dad built your suit and you stole it and Wait, you Wait, didn't even... die here? No, he didn't. He, ah. he just made it look like he died. And then he dies in that. Oh. Or makes it look like he dies. It's totally like, no, he dies it's totally like I did not do that. Right, no. I, I didn't do that. I know who that is. And he's like, oh, and then they die, and that's it. And then it's like, okay. <laughs> now so that happens, right? Oh, and that's like, that's okay, great, amazing. thanks. Cool. Armor Wars 2. Woo! There's an entire B plot where the Mandarin. Yes. yes, the Mandarin. The Mandarin. He what wants, about this Mandarin? The Mandarin wants that, like, that, that ring, right? Yes, that, the 10th ring. ring. The 10th ring. The real 10th that's ring. That's right. So he goes to San Francisco into an old curio Wait, shop. Wait, that's where Tony ended up. That's right, mm. yeah. No, and That's how we can justify it being in the same yeah, book. Yeah, throughout the book, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we, like, we, we show, you know, like, the Mandarin falls unconscious while Iron Man was unconscious. And we, like, split the book in half and show, like, the, the, rise, uh, the rise of the Mandarin and the fall of Tony Stark. And it's, like, really thematic. And it's not really. It doesn't make any sense. It's just <laughs> John Byrne <laughs> using half the real estate to set up another event that's happening after Armor Wars. Because when you get through this, you're like, Oh man, how are they going to wrap this up? Because literally in Armor Wars 2, 50% of, Iron, of Armor Wars 2 is the Mandarin doing this. Wait, 50%? So 50% of this book is the Mandarin dealing with a very old Chinese man named Chen Su. And Chen Su is just a very old man who loves smoking a pipe and he seems to know a lot more than he lets on and he reveals that like the Mandarin is a fool and he has all this power and potential and Chen has the secret ring and he's like, here you go, you can have it back now. He's like, you give it to me freely, what the hell? Uh, My heart does desire this (laughs) ring, I won't deny it. No, he's just like, give me it. Uh, He takes it out of an old like Fin Fang Foom uh, dragon statue He's like, here you go. He's like, I got the build a figure. Right, and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, that thing's expensive. But, uh, <laughs> it's funny because he's like, that ring that I gave you, or that I let you have, that is the counterfeit, it has power too, but it's not as powerful as the real ring, which you can have now. 
And when he gets the tenth ring on his finger, the Mandarin falls unconscious and gets all his memories back. So his amnesia is now cured. Okay. And he's like, I hate Tony Stark. That's good. Yes. And, he I'm does. Gonna, and uh, this is early on in the book. You're like, oh, he's going to show up. Yes. Yeah, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. Oh, here we go. Here Mandarin we go. Mandarin is, in. his memories are back. Who's this Chen Su guy? I don't know. But Chen Su has a plan. And he's also able to, like, fly and stuff. So you're like, oh, okay. He's like a mystical, ancient Chinese caricature. Sure. Whatever. Okay. He's masters his chi or whatever, and he can float. <laughs> whatever. So Chen Su, and, and literally, like, Chen Su is, like, the emperor. And the Mandarin is, like, the Vader of the book. And Chen Su's like, dude. <sighs> Enough with the Iron Man. Like, I gave your memories back so you could realize your full potential. Come on. Right. And There's so, a lot more to life than killing Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> so then Chen and the Mandarin leave, and they go to the Valley of the Dragons. And oh. it's just like this ancient Tibetan hidden Well, this, this issue is literally like the top part is about Iron Man yep. and, the and the bottom, bottom part, part is, is about the Mandarin. The Mandarin. Yeah. Wow. So the Mandarin goes to this giant freaking doorway. Huge, crazy, ornate doorway guarded by like an ancient Are you Chinese sure this isn't like Shang-Chi? Guardian. Cause there's a big giant doorway there too. Yeah, I know. So uh, there's there's a couple of really cool like old guards that are guarding the doors, and the Mandarin walks up to them and just passes through them. They're like, okay, this guy must know what's going on, but we're here to guard this doorway. But whatever. Right. But he's but the he, chosen he one from the authority, so. so I guess he's fine. <laughs> That's, so you he, just gotta look what you know what you're doing. Yeah, and he had a fine. clipboard. He yeah. was good to go. He's able to just walk right through. <laughs> so he walks through and he finds the sleeping dragon. The sleeping dragon, of course, is. Fin Fang Foom. Fin Fang Foom hadn't been used in a really long time. Okay. And so they're like, we're gonna dust off Fin Fang Foom. And you're like, oh my god, Armor Wars 2 is freaking popping off. <laughs> like, Tony right. Stark's being puppeted, and he's fighting these stupid incest twins, and this dumb guy with a goatee, who cares? But Mandarin's back, and Fin Fang fucking Foom, <laughs> yes! So, like, literally, Mandarin opens up like a puzzle box, <laughs> and proceeds to put on, like, this thing that, like, it's like a smelling salt, but it will awaken Fin Fang Foom, and only the, the, the chosen master of Fin Fang Foom can wield it, and he awakens Fin Fang Foom, and so like, this is a real problem for everybody, because like the last thing we need is a giant angry dragon wielded by the Mandarin, mm -hmm. uh, dicking around, and like look at how big he is, and like, <laughs> man, this is the price for admission for John Romita Jr. Like you're just yeah. like, yeah. yes, I am here for him drawing Fin Fang Foom. This looks awesome, cool. So he awakens Fin Fang Foom, Normally you see him, he's like a mindless dragon. He's just doing whatever. Or something. Like, he's like a wild either. animal. Yeah. And this is like, well, flesh, you've awakened me from my slumber. What do you want? Oh. And oh. Fin Fang Foom talks and has like intelligence. Cool. And uh, He's like Tony Stark. He's, he's trapped being puppeted <laughs> by idiots. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So he's just like, you know, so Mandarin's like, I want you to help me conquer China because China has forgotten what it was. And it hasn't been what it should be in centuries. Yeah. And you're going to help me get there. Yeah, and the person to fix it is a son <laughs> of a white dude and a prostitute. <laughs> That's right. Mandarin then unleashes Fin Fang Foom, proving that like he can essentially, like, he can, he can put Fin Fang Foom back to sleep, and he can control him. Oh, okay. And so Fin Fang Foom attacks China. It's like, all right, I, I don't and, care, and no but one, I have to. There's no Avengers or Iron Man, or nobody's going to show up to... The Avengers well, are boring and lame, and the X-Men couldn't care less. So that's, and that's, well, that's all the people who... That's in China. Books. That and sounds like a China, China problem. Right. Well, and China's also like, you know, it's a problem. Like, I'm, like you can't just send Captain America. Right. They don't want in, they, they don't. Captain America coming. They do not. They're like, we'll take care of it somehow. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so... Fin Fang Foom, I love it, because Fin Fang Foom means, in his ancient language that is not Chinese, <laughs> he is the shatterer, he is the great destroyer, he is the back who scratches clouds. Like, he's got crazy what? cool names. Like, I, okay. I love this reverence <laughs> for Fin Fang Foom that I have, that this, one of these issues is one of, one of my first Iron Man comics of all time. Hmm. Oh. So my first introduction to Fin Fang Foom is that he is articulate and scary and epic and says things and has crazy ass names and and has a vested interest in China mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And then I see Fin Fang Foom again and Warren Ellis is like, he has no balls, so he's mad all the time. And I'm like, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> That's fun, I guess. So like, you just, you wa you're watching uh, Chen Su and Mandarin like just watching <laughs> fin Fang Foom just lay waste to China and he's like, this is awesome. <laughs> This is amazing. And uh, well, when you say lay waste to China, 
What do you mean? Mostly exactly? he's attacking military bases. Okay, so just destroying the Chinese military. Yes, essentially he is destroying the military and what, the, to cut to the chase, he controls a third of China. Ah. And okay. Mandarin sits atop the throne of that third of China. Okay. And he's like, now for the other two thirds, here we go. Right. Are, does anybody recognize his authority? Uh, yeah, the Chinese government has to because, like, there's a dragon burning all our crap. Okay, but what, we'll get into he it. runs a third of China. What does that really mean? It, it Is he collecting means, taxes? Is yeah, he right? a government? It, what, what? Essentially, yeah, like, it doesn't really mean anything. It's uh, the same way that, like, Bane rules Gotham after he breaks <laughs> Batman's back. Like, <laughs> he does this thing and then he, he declares it. Right. But, uh, yeah. It, it, it's not that like Fin Fang, by the way, attacks like those those military groups. It's it's that he's just stretching his legs. Mm. And he's just like, yeah, I'm here. All right, well, I'm awake. I might as well kill some folk. Right. And then he goes to the people who roused him, and he's like, how about I kill you? And right. then uh, uh, Chen Su blows smoke from his pipe into Fin Fang Foom and just falls asleep. Mm. Mandarin keeps talking about ruling China and killing Iron Man and taking over the world and all this stuff. And Chen Su is like, that's not what's important, man. Like that. That's not why I like gave you your memories back. It's not why I made you wake up fin, like Fin Fang Foom. Well, why did you? Well, I need you to recognize what you could be. And if you elevate yourself to like a better station, then maybe you'll forgo the like needs of a petty, pathetic, mm. like man baby who's trying <laughs> to rewrite his own history by being a big blustering jackass. Mm -hmm. And instead actually like do something. Like be the leader you pretend to be. Mm. Like Mandarin eventually puts on what he believes to be like ceremonial, ancient, like robes of sure. you know of, of, of regal status. Mm -hmm. The the delegation of China goes to meet with the Mandarin. Right. And they're just like, all right, there's a big there's a big green dragon blowing everything up. What do you want? And he's like, right now I want this region, and then you'll give me the next region. And he's like, uh, we'll acquiesce this region for now, and then we'll we'll, we'll revisit it later. Right. Uh, and, and we'll just see if we could like blow you up with tanks and stuff later. Right. After the like fall of that one region of China, the like leaders, you know, of the military, it's over. They'll have like, like a like a meeting, mm -hmm. and Mandarin lets himself in using the power of his rings. Oh! Sure. And then uh, before a group of soldiers bursts in to shoot them, he teleports them to the moon. <laughs> the soldiers, or yes, everyone? the soldiers. Oh! And then they die, and then he teleports their bodies so their bodies can be laid to rest with their ancestors in their like actual lands. Right. He's like, I killed your people, and now you can bury them someplace, such as the power of the Mandarin. Right. Also, I have a dragon. <laughs> and so, Which I guess I don't need if I'm able to teleport people to the moon. <laughs> yeah, but the dragon is- powerful than a dragon. Yeah, but the dragon got your attention. I would not have got this meeting if it right. weren't for the dragon. The dragon's so wait, a little more showy. I'm sorry, exactly. is, the, is the dragon the sizzle and the mandarin's the steak? I think, or is the mandarin I mean, the sizzle and the dragon's the Here's the, the reality. Steak? The dragon is all of it. The dragon's the sizzle and the steak for me. <laughs> but I think as far as the mandarin's concerned, the dragon's the opening act. Okay. Mm. Because he's a tool of the mandarin. Right. Uh, but then it just stops. Wait, what? Like, so at the end of Armor Wars 2, the Mandarin just takes over China. Okay. And you're like, wait. Wait, but what but about I, the Armor But War? Armor Wars ended. Yeah. And the Mandarin just, and they're like, yeah, that's in the Dragon Seed. And the Dragon Seed saga sucks on toast. So oh. I'm just gonna tell you what oh. happens. Chen Su is a secret dragon. What? What? The guy, the old guy? The old guy's a dragon. And in fact- I love the idea of him being a secret dragon. I don't know why dragon. that's really There's a funny. bunch of dragons. Fin Fang Foom and other dragons are actually alien dragons that came from space. It's where the rings came from. And they they landed here a long, long time ago and they imper they're able to oh shape shift and He's... they can turn into people. And they- Holy shit. There's Chen Su turned into a dragon. There are secret dragons hidden among us, kind of like secret invasion. And it, 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 the Dragon Seed Saga actually is basically uh, it's secret the lizard invasion. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's lizard men. Only they're dragons. <laughs> Alien dragons. And they're like, you know. Now we, we're taking over. Yeah. Now we're rolling in and take shit Wait, over. That's they right. Have, they have ships? Yeah. Yeah, well, they come from space. Right. I, I guess I just assumed that they could breathe. I don't know they, why. They could fly in space or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they have spaceships that also look like dragons. Yeah. So they're like dinosaurs. We don't dinosaurs. drive around in ships that look like us. I know, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> but if you looked like a dragon, you'd want your stuff to look like you. <laughs> yeah, you, you would look cooler awesome, than a dragon. So I mean, I guess it's the equivalent of having a Gundam? Yeah. 
Yeah. Only they don't like, yeah. Well, anyway, so the dragons, they came here, they took, well, they didn't take over, they, in, they integrated because there were so few of them. And uh, yeah, they're just like, all right, well, you know, there are enough of us now, we're just gonna roll it and take, take shit over. So they become dragons and then they invade and Iron Man has to fight like the Mandarin well, the, ma the well, okay. does the Mandarin like they be ask, like, "Hey!" Well, they're like, "Yeah," and they're like, "No, you're gonna like hang out with us, and you'll be like the one human we keep, uh. and like you'll be the like, leader of whatever, and we'll like run everything because we're dragons." And he's like, "No, no, man, that's, that's not, not what I, want. I wanted at all." <laughs> they're like, "Oh, we're gonna get those rings back, by the way, because we need those to like pilot our ship and stuff." And oh. then he's like, "What? Do they want no. my rings?" <laughs> No, I'm not giving you my rings. No, no that sucks. Those are my rings, and I've had them a lot longer than you. And he's like, yeah, but I'm way better with them. So uh, oh my the God. Mandarin and Iron Man kind of team up and fight the dragons. And right. Then, and then it ends really disappointingly. And, uh, oh, Iron Man also, like, goes and tries to figure out how to, like, fix his nervous system, and it's a whole... Oh, that also has to happen. There's a whole subplot where, like, he finds another like company that's running experimental treatments and of course it's in China and he falls in love with this woman's married and he basically tries to get her to sleep with him anyway even though he's like she's literally like lead, the lead scientist and trying to like fix his nervous system and cure him and he's like also we should bang and like cheat on your husband <laughs> oh my god and it's like why are you doing this <laughs> I'm Iron Man that's what I do <laughs> Leopard don't change the spots so there's that but the Dragon's Eat Saga, set, you know, it sets up uh, yeah. like where it's like, what, remember Yinsen, the like guy who helped Iron Man in the beginning yeah, of his yeah. whole career? Well, like, here's something you didn't know about him, and it's like, so, what? Are, who cares? Are the dragons all really big? They can get big. Like, is Fin Fang Foom always big? Fin Fang Foom is always big. Well, only when they dino ball can they get big. <laughs> Yin, <laughs> fin Fang Foom can alter his size. Can he get? Can he turn into a guy? Fin Fang Foom does not turn into a man. But everyone but else can turn into a guy or a Only person. the ones that also turned into guys. The so, ones that so first got here. So there's two types of dragons. Ones that are always dragons and yes. ones that can be men. That's right. And he's one of the ones that cannot be men. That's right. Okay. Do they speak <laughs> Do they speak in roars at each other? Uh, yes. Because they're That's speaking, a, they're speaking an ancient dragon language that you can't possibly comprehend. <laughs> right. They, they only do speak also English, know English. But they oh, do just, also yell things in English. It just sounds like roars to me. Yeah, it's like I am Groot. I, yeah. you know, I know Ethan does, does not like dragons in Well, comics. I was going to say, there's a lot of dragons in this there's book. There's a lot of dragons, but it's not, it's old dragons. Mm -hmm. It's not I, someone aping off a pre-existing dragon theme. I was going to say, I get why he doesn't, because I, I like dragon stuff, and this is... This is not I don't fun. I don't know what this is. <laughs> no, it's... it's what this The is. idea of, like... You're it's into dragon secret, stuff? The idea of... It's, well, in, like, comics, I, like, uh, I'm like, that's kind of fun. Yeah. That's neat. Like, yeah. I like Fin Fang Foom. I'm like, I like Fin Fang Foom, too. Me, too. I'm, like, kind of interested. I'm like, yeah. oh, a dragon shows up. They're like, cool. Yeah, one fun. dragon's great, one dragon, but, like, ten dragons... Thirty dragons. Uh, that also have beards and talk to each other, and they're aliens, dragons. and they're also trying to take over the so world. So, a retcon for Fin Fang Foom, he wasn't previously an alien, right? No, he was always an alien, oh, but like okay. there, there, so there wasn't all this bullshit around it. No. <laughs> so, okay. dragons. So it's secret invasion, but they're dragons. And it's in like two books. Yeah, it's it's like it's way too many. Oh, you think it's, it's okay. like three, but it's actually like six. Oh, okay. It's it's it's, it's it never ends. I remember reading it and being like, shouldn't this be over? <laughs> like at some point, oh, no, it's been epic. Like, I, I was I was building to this, yeah. so yeah. Uh, that's. Yeah. yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it. So that's Iron Man. That's Armor Wars. That was my first Iron Man comic. This one right here. This beat the crap Iron Man comic. That's fucking awesome. In the awesome. Deadly Claws of Fin Fang Foom. So obviously, as a kid, I'm like, well, obviously, Fin Fang Foom was a massive Iron Man villain. <laughs> it's like, nope. Nope. Straight up, no. Straight up, I'll never see him in another Iron Man comic again for as long as I live. <laughs> like, oh. Oh. But Armor Wars too, baby. Wow. Yeah. 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 So That's... like, no, it's not really an armor war, but they did tell Burn, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's called armor wars. Right, right. right. So but it's not... like, you, you can't but imagine my disappointment. You could have called any book armor wars because- Because he's wearing armor all the he's time. He's fighting and he's wearing armor in every book. Yes. I, I, I it cannot- sucks. I cannot tell you my disappointment <laughs> when we culminate in the end of Armor Wars 2 and we don't resolve the, like Mandarin just yeah. straight up takes over China and this rando DeWitt, Kirsten DeWitt is defeated. Yeah. And we don't know who he is or why he's <laughs> mad in the first place. What happened to the incest twins? Oh, yes. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. The brother 
isn't satisfied making his millions of dollars through business, so he ends up selling drugs as well. <laughs> so the Punisher finds him. What? So Punisher just straight up walks. Like he takes the elevator, he goes up to the guy's <laughs> office. People are like, ah! Like people in the office, like jumping out of Frank Castle's way. <laughs> and he's like, time to die. And then the brother takes out a gun, shoves it in his own mouth, and blows his brains out. That's what he like was he was gonna do in the first place. when oh he was my invented. God. He's like, I can rob you of the joy you will derive from killing me by killing myself. And, and Cass is like, okay. Punisher goes. <laughs> yeah. He just like it's goes, fine. all right. Like, what would have been better? I know I'm giving notes for a book that's 30 years old, but like what would have been better is if Punisher was leaving before he did it. Right. Like he's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you're gonna kill yourself, right? <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm really gonna do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm in the elevator. That's why I'm leaving. I better I get that bag. I don't need to kill back. you if you're gonna do yeah, that. Or I'll come back and it's gonna I, be worse. I just want you dead. Yeah. I don't have to kill you. Yeah, yeah I, I just I don't need get, you to not be right. alive. Is, I don't care. I don't. This isn't fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a sadist. This is yeah. my job. I don't, yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. I just need you to be dead. Right. I'm not even a superhero. Don't don't let the logo fool you. This to scare you. Yeah, I just do this. <laughs> I just do this. It's a flak jacket. So uh, yeah, he dies. So that's that. Yeah, no. So it all wraps up in a neat little package, <laughs> each in their own individual issue, months or years apart. <sighs> Classic. Great. Sweet. Iron Man, Armor Wars 2. If you'd like to read it, it's collected in your handy dandy volume of Marvel Comics at your local comic book store or online. Here's a link for it in the comments down below. If you'd like to subject yourself to this, uh, the John Romita Jr. art is dope. The Mandarin subplot is actually really engaging. Mm -hmm. The problem is it doesn't resolve until you read the Dragon Seed Saga, which I don't know if it actually is collected. If it mm. is, it's in like a, an essential collection somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you could get all the copies <laughs> for a dollar or less in any comic book bargain bin. Yeah. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time with an all new episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. This ad for the Punisher game. Punisher game Boy game. First caption, like, nope. Rocket missiles are the perfect weapon to blow up enemy choppers.